everyone, my name is Katie Andersack and I'm an instructor with Ballet Wichita Institute and Ballet Wichita's company manager. And over the last semester or two with my intermediate ballet beginner point ladies, we have been doing a point strengthening and turnout warm up before class. And so we want to create this video for all of our dancers to be able to do this over the summer and when they can't make it to class. So a couple of things that you're gonna need for these exercises. First is a TheraBand. It can be whatever strength you need. And we'll put a link in the notes of some places where you can buy um, the TheraBand online. The next thing in the exercises, this is considered a TheraBand loop. Again, we'll put a link where these can be purchased. They also typically can be found at your local Target, TJ Maxx, or Home Goods in packs of three with different strengths. And then the final thing that we'll need is this is considered a ballet band, it's a rubber band, um, and we'll also put a link for that for you. So we'll get going with the first exercise. The first exercise we're going to do is an ankle stretch. So that involves the TheraBand. You take the TheraBand and put it over the ball of your foot so that your toes are covered as well. And you start with a flex. You make sure you hit that half point, and then you go down to point, uh, your half point again, and flex. And you keep doing that nice and slow, making sure you hit each of those positions. Try to do 10 to 15. If that becomes easy, bump it up by two or three. Do that on each foot. Make sure your stance is one leg out, one leg bent like a passe but flat against the leg and sitting up as straight as you can. So the trick with this ankle stretch is to make sure that your ankle is staying stable and you're not wiggling it out to come back in. Yes, a lot of times you see this little wiggle in your ankle and you wanna go straight and straight. That's why we're gonna do it very slow. So while you're also working on articulating your arch, you're making sure that that ankle bone is not wobbly. The next series of stretches is for ankle mobility. It's gonna work some of those smaller muscles that we maybe don't realize we're not using or underutilizing, which is really gonna help support your ankle both in point and on flat shoe. So for this exercise, you're gonna use what I call the TheraBand loop. I'm sure it has a more technical name, but this loop you're gonna put across the balls of your feet. One leg is gonna act as a base and the other leg is gonna do your work. And so this becomes your home base and you don't want to go past this home base. And so you're going to use these outside muscles of your foot and just slowly move it out, away from center, and back. You're gonna do this seven to 10 times in flex. As that becomes easier, then you can bump it up 12, 15, 20, and then you're gonna do it in point. You should see less movement in the point and you should feel it through the muscles right here, yeah? And so this foot is just anchoring it so there's tension in the band and you just go in and out in flex and in point on both sides. So the second part to this exercise is to then cross your legs. So keeping the band on your feet, put tension in it, cross it over, feel free to adjust if you need. And now your top foot becomes your anchor and your bottom foot becomes the mover. And this time you're gonna go away from center, both flexed and point. Yeah, and again, you're gonna be working these outside muscles, but you should feel them in a different location than you did when you were doing them in parallel like this. So the next exercise is one that you really should do anytime you're about to put point shoes on to wake up and warm up your ankles. So after you do those stretches on the floor with the TheraBand and the TheraBand loop, find a surface, whether you have a bar at home, or a countertop or anything flat that you can put pressure on. So you're gonna face that in first and you're going to plie, making sure those tiny toes stay on the floor. Then you're going to arch up, get a good stretch in your arch, straighten, lower your heels, and then reverse it. Go up, arch over, heels down, keeping that tiny toe on the floor and straighten. Doing both ways is considered one rep or one set. So try and do about 10 to 15 sets, either part of this warm up or any time right before class or before show to make sure that your feet are nice and warm before, before you put them in your point shoes 
and ideally after you get those point shoes on to get them molded to your foot and broken in. So the next thing and the last thing we'll do focusing on ankles is releves. That's the number one thing any dancer can do anywhere, grocery store, at home, at school, waiting in a line, wherever, to really keep those ankles strong. So I would recommend doing 32. So you start facing whatever platform you're gonna uh, use as your bar, and you're just gonna plie, releve, plie, releve. Do 32 like that, then put one foot in coupe, plie, releve, plie, releve. 32 that way, 32 the other way. Yeah, and make sure when you do that, you're real careful, again, that your ankle goes straight up and down and doesn't kind of wobble to one side. So if they need to be slower, that's fine. Maybe do less than 32 if you notice you kind of have a wobbly ankle. Go straight up, straight down. The next exercise is clams. Um, this is to focus on one, your turnout, and two, using the glutes. That tends to be a muscle that as dancers really holds our extension and position but we use other muscles to get it up there and sometimes it's underdeveloped. So, you're gonna want to lay. You can lay on the ground or you can put your elbow underneath you. You want your hips to be stacked and the feet to be behind your booty, yeah? So you're making a nice um, 90 degree or L shape. And then, the goal is not to open as far as you can. That's to work your turn out from the thigh area and you're welcome to do that as part of this regimen, but what I'm gonna focus on is working the outside of your leg. So that means smaller clams and slower. So you're gonna go up just a little bit and then back down. Up just a little bit and then back down. You should be using the muscles through here to lift your leg and not your thigh. So use those muscles, engage them, bring them down. Don't go any higher than that. Do about 15 to 20 more if you catch yourself not engaging those muscles. Another thing you can do to increase the um, strengthening of those muscles or the workout is to take your TheraBand loop and get it around your thighs. Get yourself back in that position and then use that resistance to keep you from going higher um, doing that thigh turnout versus the outside of our leg turnout. So the next thing is called inverted clams, or at least that's what I call them. And it's essentially what we just did, but now the knees stay on the ground, the ankles come up. You can also use that looped TheraBand around your thighs if you want to. Again, to work the outer leg, we're gonna do smaller clams. You can also do bigger ones and a repetition after to work the inner thigh for that portion of the turnout as well. So you just come up and down. Feel it through here, use these muscles and not your thigh to lift your leg up. Yes, do 15 to 20 on each side of those as well. Continuing with our turnout strengthening exercises, our leg lifts. Now we've done clams and inverted clams and you can do all of these turnout strengthening exercises on one leg and then do the other or you can do each exercise on both legs and then move on to the next. So our third exercise is leg raises or leg lifts um, on the ground. And so again, you want this leg to be underneath you so your hips stay square, your foot's kind of behind your booty, and you're going to lift the leg up. Again, we're not working our thigh or our batmans, we're working these muscles here. So lift it up and then down. And do it slowly so you feel the burn. Yeah, it's not about getting through it, it's about conditioning. So the slower you go, the more conditioned you'll be. You can use that looped TheraBand again if you want extra resistance. Once you do 15 to 20 of those, keep it up and then do a little rotation, turn in, turn out. This, again, try not to use the thigh at first and rotate pushing this under. Yes? And this can be small, it doesn't have to be huge. And once you do the lifts and the turn in and turn out, go to the other side. The last exercise in this circuit of turnout conditioning, we've got our two clams and our leg raises, and then our turn in and turn out, is a rond de jambe. This one you do need to be laying on the floor, hips stacked, 
and you're going to bring your leg front and you're really going to think about your turn out the whole way and then at the last possible second turn it back yeah and we're not trying to get in our arabesque this is about keeping the hips stacked and just working on the turnout through here. So it works your core because you got to stay stable and it's not about the extension front, side, or even back. It's all about that turnout that you need for a good clean rond de jambe. Do that 15 to 20 times on each leg. So this exercise I call moving butterflies. It's got three parts to it, but it's all generally the same movement, which is really going to work on your turnout. And now we're working more on our thigh turnout than our quad and glute turnout. So you're going to start with your legs in front of you, feet flexed. You're going to point, then you're going to draw your knees up, trying to stay as straight as possible, then you're going to butterfly them out. Push them down, staying pointed, flex them, trying to keep those tiny toes as close to the ground as possible, point, turn parallel. Do that, that's considered one set. Do that, 7 to 12, bump it up however much you need. So that's part one. Part two is you're going to do the same thing, but now laying on the ground. So you can put your arms wherever you need to, just make sure they're out of the way of your legs. You bring them up, you turn out to butterfly. You push them down, flex, trying to get those tiny toes on the floor, point, turn in. Again, that's one set. So now part three of this is doing almost all of that, but adding something in. So you're going to bring it up. You're going to come through, bring it out, flex, point, bring it back through to your turned out butterfly, touch your toes to the ground, push them down, flex, point, turn in. So again, bring them up, double pay out pointed, then flex, then pointed, then turned out butterfly, push your legs down, flex, try and keep your little toes on the ground, and point, turn in. So those are the three progressions of the butterfly stretch for your turnout. So the next exercise we're gonna talk about is called a hip pull. So this, it requires a TheraBand, and you're gonna tie the TheraBand in a knot around some sort of pole or object, if you don't have something that's sturdy enough and not going to move a lot at home, what you can do is tie it in a knot and close that knot um, in the door and be on the opposite side. That way it gives the TheraBand some tension. You can have a friend, a parent, a brother, boyfriend, husband, whatever, hold on to it and make sure that you've got that tension. Because what you want is to end up with your hands and knees with the tension in the band and you're just going to glide that forward trying to keep your knee as close to the floor as possible. And then let it go back to the neutral position, but don't let the fair band pull it past that neutral position. You wanna stay with some tension in the band, pull it forward, and then go back. Yes, do that 10 to 15 times. Make it less if you start to really feel it in your hip. And as it becomes easier, increase the number of reps. This is what the hip pull exercise looks like from the side. So you're gonna pull that leg, towards you, trying to keep it as close to the floor as possible, and then let the band pull you back to neutral, but don't go past neutral. Stay neutral so there's some tension in the band, yes? Forward and back. So the next exercise in this grouping of exercises is more on conditioning your entire body versus a certain aspect of dancing, ankles or turnout. So this is a bridge, but what you want to do is actually start where there's a little bit of sway in your back. And then you're going to use these muscles to push those vertebrae onto the ground so you've got a neutral position in your back. Arms out, then you're going to push up into a bridge, hold for 10 or 15 seconds, and then fold each vertebrae back on the ground and then let that sway come back. That's considered one set. If you want to make this a little more challenging, you can increase the number of reps or put a TheraBand, that looped TheraBand around your thighs and spread your thighs out so when you're coming up, you've got some extra tension to work through your quads. 
The next strengthening exercise is for our arabesques and our back flexibility. So you're gonna start on your stomach with your legs extended out, and you're gonna have your hands here by your chest. And so you're going to push up, and you can put a little pressure on your hands, but you're not pushing up with your hands. You're letting your back bring you up. You can put some pressure once you've got to your height of what you can do. And then you're gonna push up and really stretch back. And that's considered one stretch. And then come back down. Then come up. Hold it, and then push up. Do that six or seven times. Really get a good stretch in your back. Before you move on, stretch it this way in child's pose, and then go back down. So that's part one. Part two, now, you do not have the help of your hands, and you're going to just lift up and come down. And you're going to hold maybe five or six seconds, or as long as you can, and then lift up again, arms straight out in front of you, up, and then down. So that's part two. Part three, your hands can be wherever you want, because now we're going to focus on our legs. You're going to lift and come down. The goal is to try to keep your hips square as much as possible. We're not lifting that way, we're lifting up this way, yeah? It's about up just to where the hip leaves the floor. Yes, lift, hold, and down. Do about 10 to 15 on each leg. And then finally, part 5, 50, wherever we are, you're gonna have your hands out, yes, and you're gonna lift your back and one leg at a time, and lower, and then switch, and lower. Do that 10 to 15 times with each leg. So next we're gonna do leg raises. The goal of this is not about height. Yeah, it's about working these muscles like we were doing in our turnout. And also important, don't let this knee lock. So as you're doing these, and I'll go through the proper positioning, if you find yourself locking your knee, you can stand on something that gives you a little bit of height, so then you can kind of swing a little bit back to your neutral position, and you're not so worried about the inner thighs, yes? So, the goal is to keep your hips as square as possible. And you, it's all about staying turned in, which seems super unnatural for us, but you want to stay turned in as much as possible. And so you come forward, and you're using your glutes to lift your leg, and you come back, and you do this seven to 10 times. Again, if that becomes easy, up it. The weird one is to the side. We want to go this way, but what you're actually going to do is more of a diagonal back. And you're going to lift it, and you'll see if you try both of them, you get much more work out of your glutes when you're a little bit farther back. Yes, seven to ten of those increase as necessary. The hard one is to the back. Tuck your tailbone, keep your hips square, and just a little lift. It's all about that one is the hardest to keep yourself parallel and not try and turn out, which is why it's probably going to go the shortest distance off the floor. So once you do it on one leg, switch and do it on the other. This next exercise is to help your planches. Ideally, you'll use a dance band, but you can also use a TheraBand. The way to use the TheraBand is to make a loop, tie it in a knot, put it around your foot, and then use your other hand to get the tension that you would have in the dance band. But with the dance band, what you're gonna do is you are going to wrap it around the foot that is going to be going up in your arabesque and planche. And so you might have to adjust it based on your band and your legs. I have short legs, so mine goes around two times. You might be able to get more or less depending on the length of your band and the length of your legs. And then you're going to put the band over your opposite shoulder. Yes? So here's where we are. You're going to taunt you back, and you're going to let the band pull you up into a planche. Yes? Try and keep your shoulders square. Pull it up into a planche. And come down. Do that 10 to 15 times. Then you're going to go down into your planche, and you're going to pulse. Pulse, pulse. 
pulse, you're going to do that for 20 pulses. Again, add more as that gets easier. Then the next part is you're going to go through passe into a double pay planche, tendu. Yes, let that band pull you a little bit higher. And if you're not getting a good stretch, wrap it around one more time. Yes. So, we've done planche lifts, pulse up and planche. Now planche through double pay. The last thing is you're just going to go to your arabesque and pulse. Again, try and do 15 to 20 pulses. Stretch. Make sure that before you do this exercise, you have <clears throat> either taken class or warmed up. If this is something you want to work on at home, make sure you do 50 jumping jacks before, do some of these other strengthening exercises before, run in place for two minutes, do something so your muscles are warm and you don't end up tearing them or straining them as you're trying to stretch. Without your muscles being warm, you're not going to maintain whatever kind of extension you develop with this band. So please, please, please do this safely and do it at the end of your exercise regimen or after warming up. So we're gonna move on to the stretching portion of this video. And the first thing we're gonna do are calf stretches. You can do these on any ledge that you have in your home. I typically at my house do them on the stairs. You can also do them with this yoga block, but you wanna make sure you have something to hold on to with whatever ledge you're doing this on. So first, you're gonna start with your balls of your feet on that ledge where your heels can hang off. You wanna get a nice, deep stretch in those calves. And you wanna hold it for 10, 15, 20 seconds, depending on how tight your calves are. And then you want to slowly releve up and then go back down. Again, like we talked about with the TheraBand stretch at the very beginning, you wanna make sure your ankles aren't rolling, but they're going straight up and straight down. And it tends to be that that point where you're gonna hit your max releve is where your ankle either rolls in a little bit or rolls out. So if you notice that and you can look down, the proper stance is looking up, but to make sure if you don't have a mirror that your ankle is going straight up or straight down, if you notice it kind of wobble, then don't go that high. Don't go to your full releve. So after you releve, then you come back down and you get that nice calf stretch. Do that five, six times um, with both feet and then you're gonna do it one foot. And you'll notice that ankle movement more when you've got one foot going down. Get that stretch and then go up. Do that five to six times and then switch feet. The next exercise with just our stretching portion is um, a stretch butterfly which uses the ballet band. You can use a TheraBand if you have one that has enough give. You can tie the TheraBand around each foot as it loops behind your back. So you can try it that way if you do not have a ballet band. If you do have a ballet band, you're going to fold it, wrap it around, and then each loop goes around the arch of your foot. And so you sit up nice and tall, and the more you put your feet away from your body, the more stretch you can get in your hips. And you let the band take you as flat back as you can. Stop when you get a good stretch in your hip. Count 15 to 20 seconds. And then come back up and release the tension in your hips. And then you're going to start again. And you should be able to go. Let the band pull you down a little bit farther than you went the last time. Hold 10 to 15 seconds. Come up. Release. You want to make sure between each one of these you release the tension because you're working it and then you're releasing it. And by releasing it, the next time you work it, you should be able to go a little bit farther than you did the time before. The last stretch with this band is a pike stretch. So you can do it right after you do these butterflies. You just extend out. If you need to, you can move it up to the ball of your foot. But you wanna make sure that you feet are flexed. You get a nice stretch through your calves. So you're going to do the same thing we did in the butterfly, where you let the band take you over, you hold 15 to 20 seconds, come up, release, and then each time the band should be able to get you a little bit farther. Do that three or four times, and when you've gotten to the max, keeping your feet flexed the whole time, then point, go over, get a nice stretch, 
and then shake it out and then you're done. I hope that you found these conditioning and stretching exercises helpful. I would recommend doing these a minimum of two to three times a week. If you're new on point, I would definitely try and hit a few of each section every day. Yeah, you can do these while you're doing your homework, watching TV at home, after class, before class. Just make sure you get some of these in every day as you start to strengthen your abilities on point. If you have any questions about these exercises or are interested in more or what classes Ballet Wichita Institute offers that utilizes these, you can find me on Valley Wichita's website as the company manager, and feel free to send me an email and I will be happy to help you with whatever you need. Thank you.